From LEX 18, your official UK sports station for Big Blue Nation, this is BBN Tonight. Presented by Central Bank, the official bank of UK athletics. Welcome to BBN Tonight. I'm Anna Rulo. And I'm Keith Farmer. And we are 12 days away from the first Kentucky football game. Can you believe that? I can't. It's so awesome. we're celebrating. <laughs> Lots of football talk coming up on tonight's show. The voice of the Wildcats, Tom Leach, is joining us. But we'll also talk a little basketball, too. I have an exclusive interview with Kyra Elsie. Well, let's start it off. But let's start with football because mm -hmm. the Wildcats had another scrimmage this past weekend. And that's tonight's Big Blue Story presented by Baptist Health. Fall training camp is officially over. Classes at UK get started today and game prep can officially begin. The team had their last scrimmage of fall camp on Saturday. Of course, you'd like to see a polished football team, but with two weeks still left to go before opening kick at Kroger Field, Mark Stoops is just looking for clean, efficient football, and he was pleased with what he saw. Pleased to get the second scrimmage in. Felt like, uh, you know, again, a lot of good work in the stadium. I wanted to be as close to game ready as we possibly could walking off the field today. And uh, we made some headway, uh, but obviously we have two weeks uh, to, to put the finishing touches on it. But uh, really good work. Uh, stayed relatively healthy again, which is always a, a bit of a concern when you go into a big physical scrimmage like that. But uh, we got a lot of work done. Um, defensively started really well. Offense, uh, was it was good to see them respond. Uh, made some good plays, some good drives, um, but defensively, you know, should be a touch ahead with the experience that we have there, and, and did some really good things. So, uh, you know, you know, I always say that, but as as the head coach is always, uh, when one side or the other dominates, you're you're a bit concerned. And I felt like it was uh, about 50-50 today. Both sides did some good things at times. Anna, Coach Stoops has talked a lot about balance this offseason. At mm -hmm. first, it sounded like the defense was ahead, but then he kind of circled back and said it was about 50-50. But if the offense can come in with a new coordinator, new quarterback, new starting wide receiver in Wondell Robinson, and still get close to 50-50 with this veteran defense, I think that's a pretty good sign, right? Of course it is. I think it would be concerning if offense was too far ahead if it's brand new. But the defense might be getting another boost pretty soon. Coach Stoops had a promising update on J.J. Weaver's recovery timeline, saying Weaver could play some during the Week 1 matchup against Louisiana Monroe. Sounds like J.J. is still going to be eased back into things, just getting some spot duty at first. But it's really incredible he's going to be ready to play a game just 280 days after tearing his ACL against Florida last season, Keith. I'd love to see him out there, but I do hope they take it kind of slow mm -hmm. with him. I want to see him out there for the full season. All right, on the other hand, linebacker Jacquez Jones is still out. Josh Paschal told the media after practice that Jones did not participate in the scrimmage. We'd heard Jones was a little banged up earlier in camp and he had his ankle wrapped during the open practice when we went there last week. Hopefully this is just all preventative so that Jones can get back out there as soon as possible. Now we think he's going to be fine though he was <laughs> tweeting today about the long walk to classes but if it does linger we're starting to feel pretty good about the young guys in that linebacker room. Here's what Josh Paschal is seeing out of freshman Marchez thrower in Trevin Wallace. Yeah I see them coming along well. Uh, Tez and Trevin uh, there's some playmakers there's some young playmakers. Um, I wish I could be here longer to see them uh, grow even more uh, upon the next couple of years, but I know as far as being young uh, freshmen, they're playing really well. I don't think he's the only one who wishes he could be here a little bit longer. The more we hear about Trevin Wallace and Martez Thrower, the more excited I'm getting. Easy to get ahead of ourselves, though. It usually takes a little while to get acclimated to playing in the SEC. And if you remember last year, it took about half the season for J.J. Weaver to really start to show his potential. And then he was all freshman SEC, Keith. Yeah, you know, I think, though, Coach Stewart said, that he's going to clone Josh. So I think yeah, Josh is going to be, be around. Here, at least some version of Yeah, that. exactly. <laughs> All right, Coach Stoops also addressed the ongoing legal issues involving six current football players who were charged with first-degree burglary. Vito Tisdale also charged with one count of wanton endangerment. Stoops said that none of the involved players are currently practicing with the team. With this, this is different. So um, it's, it's, it's something that we have to, to weed through. I'm not sure when they'll be back. Um, you know, there's a, a process, uh, the legal process needs to play out. I need to, to, to see in this discovery if there's something that we didn't know about. And I don't, I don't, you know, we don't have all that information and their attorneys don't have all that information yet. 
when they receive that info and we get the discovery, we'll, we'll make a, uh, decisions from there. All six players are set to appear in court again this Wednesday for a hearing. Coming up next on BBN Tonight, enough about the QB battle. We need to talk about the depth chart at defensive tackle. Tom Leach is joining us for that, but all right, we'll talk a little about the quarterback <laughs> too. How did Will Levis look in scrimmage under scrimmage number two? That's all coming up right after this.